So fill me up, sing it to the Lord, until I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over, sing it. So fill me up, mighty God, until I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over, sing it. So fill me up, fill me up, until I overflow, mighty God. I want to run over, I want to run over, so fill me up, mighty God, until I overflow. Who wants God to fill you afresh, with a fresh anointing, a fresh touch? David said, he anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over, mighty God. Father, in the name of Jesus, before we get into the Word of God, God, I pray for a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost to touch your people. God, and as we go into the Word, I pray for a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, revelation. Feed your people with fresh bread from heaven this morning, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help your people to understand the power of brokenness on this morning, God. That brokenness is not necessarily always a bad thing. But we pray for brokenness in our own hearts because you said in your word, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, you will not despise, O oh God. Minister to your people this morning. Have your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Someone say a good amen right now. Now, I want to talk about this morning the power of brokenness. Actually, it's coming from Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 I said yesterday Matthew chapter 5 verse 5 but it's actually Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 and it's coming from the Beatitudes and on yesterday we talk about blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven and on today we are going into verse 4 listen to this Jesus said blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And the word right there, mourn, actually means to be grieved, to, to just be heartbroken over a situation, to grieve, to weep, to just pour your heart out to the point until you can't pour it out no more. Someone have hurt you or someone have done something to just, that, that it just grieve you. Are you listening to me? It costs you to be well, to lament, to just pour your heart out to God. Almost like Hannah, the Bible says she wept sore because her adversary provoked Hannah and she wept and poured her heart out to God. But that's a story for another day. That's my wife's message. So I'm not going to get into that. But listen to this. I want to read something to you. Jesus said, let me read this again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. To be comforted means God will bring the desire of the reason that you were crying out to God, pretty much that God would answer your prayer or fix this situation that have caused you so much grief and pain and trouble and sleepless nights. So to be comforted means that God fulfill the desires of your heart. That's why I believe it's Psalms that says, he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry with good things. Now watch this. I want to go into the book of Genesis chapter 37 verses 31 through 35. Now I want, to, I want you to really listen to me because I have to give you a lot of scriptures this morning so you can see this. Watch this. Remember how Joseph brothers, they were jealous of Joseph. And so what they did was they threw him in a pit and sold him into slavery. And these men, these brothers were so jealous and evil, they killed the animal and took Joseph, coat of many colors, and dipped it in blood. And now they got this story cooked up to go and tell their dad that Joseph was eaten by a wild animal. They found his coat of many colors and it's just filled with blood. How can you even come to the point that you're willing to tell your mom or dad something like that? 
th this story just boggles my mind. But you know, the plan of God is very strange. We don't always understand it. It always makes sense later. So don't even pretend that you know it all because you don't. None of us do. Only God knows it all. Now watch this. Verse 31 of Genesis 37 says, And they took Joseph's coat and killed a, a, a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or not. Oh, come on, give me a break. Biggest liars in town. Now watch verse 33. And Jacob knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn or rent in pieces. And the Bible says this in verse 34, And Jacob rent his clothes, he tore his clothes, and put on sackcloth upon his loins, and mourned for his son many days. Now notice what Jesus said. Jesus said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Which means that the person that has a broken heart, that person who have just been hurt so bad to the point that they poured their complaint out to God. God, Jesus want you to know that God have took note of your mourning. God have took note of your broken heart. God have took note of the pain that those folk have caused you. And watch this. He might not do it immediately, but God is going to fix this thing. Now watch this. Listen to verse 35 of Genesis chapter 37. And all of his sons and all of his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, I'm going down to the grave mourning for Joseph. And his father wept for him. Now, Jacob was wrong right here because Jacob had a great relationship with God, but who can think straight under this kind of disastrous, terrible news? Now, this totally blows some people with, their, with the positive faith confession. Joseph, J Jacob said, man, I'm going down to the grave morning. Man, some people would have said, oh, you don't have faith. And some people just need to hush with that nonsense because when a person is grieving, man, let him grieve. Please, don't, don't try to be too spiritual. You know, David said, I feel the Holy Ghost about to fall here. Listen here. You know, David said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his fears. It was David who says, in my distress, I cried out to the Lord and he heard my cry and he made things right. Somebody shout, it's okay to be real with God. Come on, man, don't be a fake Christian. Stop going around telling people who are grieving and people who are hurting and people who have suffered from a broken heart. Oh, you shouldn't say that. That's not being in faith. Tell Job he was not being in faith. Job said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Bless it. Be the name of the Lord. Man, it's time to stop playing church. I don't like being around super spiritual Christians. My God, if somebody is hurting, let the person talk about it. Let them pour their hearts out. It's time to come real with God. My God, if you think you're spiritual, none of us are more spiritual than Christ. You know what Jesus said on the cross? My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Jesus cried out. He mourned. Oh, glory to God. But he know that there was coming a day when God was going to make it right. Now, hold on. I get, I'm getting ahead of myself. I just can't help this this morning because I feel the Holy Ghost is preaching to some folks that have been mourning, that have been grieving. You've been believing God to turn things around for a long time and the prayer have not been answered yet. Ah, but I got good news for you because God is about to make it right. God is about to fix it up. God is about to straighten it out. God is about to comfort you. God's about to bring you out of it. God's about to turn it around in your life. The Bible says in Psalms 126, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our hearts filled with singing and our mouths with laughter. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. God 
God is about to come for you. Shout yes, somebody. Now watch this. Listen to this. Now I'm jumping straight over to the part where there, you know the famine happened. You who study your Bibles and know the story. And Joseph brothers had to end up coming to Joseph for bread in Egypt. He revealed himself to them. And after he knew that his dad was alive, he sent for his father. So now I'm fast forwarding to the part where God's about to come for Jacob for mourning over the loss of, of, of Joseph. And he's about to come for Joseph for being separated from his dad. So I'm fast forwarding this story in the Genesis chapter 45, verse 24 through 28. I can't close this unless I read this. Watch this. Genesis chapter 45, verses 24 through 28. So Joseph sent his brethren away and they departed. And he said unto them, see that you fall not out by the way. And look, just go and bring my dad back. Now watch this. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan under Jacob, their father, and told him saying, Joseph is yet alive. Now these boys about to face the music, but I'm going to have to talk about this at another time. We don't have time this morning. And told him saying, Joseph is yet alive. And he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And I love the end of this verse. The Bible says, and Jacob's heart faded, for he believed them not. He thought, man, this news is too good. I believe God's about to make some of you faint. The news is going to be so good. God is about to blow your mind. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. You know, watch this. The Bible says this. Verse 27 of Genesis 45. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when Jacob saw the wagons, which Joseph had sent to bring him back into the land of Egypt, the Bible says the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Oh, glory to God. I feel like I'm in church this morning. That means that this old man who had suffered from a broken heart for more than 18, 20 years, thinking that Joseph was dead. Oh my God, now the news comes that Joseph is alive. Be remember now, didn't Jesus say, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Remember how Jacob mourned. Now his days of mourning had come to a close. And the Bible says, Jacob said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I'll go down and see him before I die. Ah, but if you look at the life of Joseph, it really ain't talking about Joseph. This whole Bible is about Jesus. And Jacob is a type of Christ's disciples who had cried and wept over Jesus when he died. And remember Martha and Mary went down to the tomb and Jesus appeared to them and say, go tell my brethren, I'm alive. I'm going before you into Jerusalem. And when the ladies came and told the disciples that Jesus was alive, the Bible says they believed them not. Their words seemed unto them as idle tales. So Jesus' disciples that wept and mourned when Christ was crucified, their hearts was comforted. And remember I said earlier how Jesus mourned and cried with a loud voice and said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But three days later, the Bible says, the Spirit of God raised him from the dead and comforted him. And Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Now I'm talking to you. Blessed are you that mourn, for you shall be comforted. God's about to make it right. God's about to fix it. God's about to turn it around. He's about to answer your prayer. Shout yes. Glory to God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Come on, play the anthem. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it with me. Glory. You have won the victory.
victory. Sing it with me this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God, you have won it all for me. Jesus, death could not hold you down. Come on and lift your hands to heaven and sing it. You are the risen King. Mighty God, mighty God, seated in majesty. We love you, Lord. You are the risen King. Sing you with everything you have in you this morning. Hallelujah. Mighty God, you have won the victory. You know, we serve a God of love. We serve a God of compassion. We serve a God of forgiveness. We serve a God of restoration. We serve a God who gives us another chance. Someone watching this broadcast this morning, he's calling you, but you got to surrender your life to him. He loves you this morning. Listen, don't play games with me this morning. If your heart is not right with God, if you are not saved, this is your moment, my friend. This is your time. This is your hour to make it right with God. If you are a backslider, I know you haven't been living right before God. It's time to repent. The Bible says repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Keep playing the anthem. I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. I'm tired of living like a devil. I'm ashamed of myself. Jesus, I ask you this morning to wash me in your blood. Cleanse me. Save me. Deliver my soul. Set me free from the devil, God. Jesus, I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that you are the son of the living God. That you died on Calvary for me. And on the third day, God raise you from the dead. Jesus, I humble myself in your presence. Wash me in your blood. From this day moving forward, I surrender my life to you. And I say to you, Lord, not my will, but your will be done in my life. I surrender all to you. Friend, if you just prayed that prayer, I got great news for you this morning. Your sins have been forgiven. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. He has forgiven you. And for me and Pastor Amy, we want to be the first to say to you, welcome into the kingdom of God. You are now a child of God on your way to heaven. I want you to type under this video and said, I have just surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to type under this video, I have just surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. We want to hear from you, my friend. For the rest of you that's watching, if you're watching us through YouTube, Click on the red and white subscribe button, subscribe to this channel so you can get all of these uploads, all of these encouraging messages that God's given to me and my wife. You will receive them daily. Click on the subscribe button right now. Click on that notification bell and you would receive all of our videos, all of our uploads and every time we go live, you will be notified. If you're watching us through Facebook, like us on Facebook, follow us on Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. Like us on Facebook, follow us, send us a friend request. And remember, we always ask you guys, stand with us. Send in your donations. Send in your love gifts. Show your support of the work of God. And you know what God's going to do. It's not about greed. This is about the gospel. But God has promised when you give, 
it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosoms. He says, I'll open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. When you support the work of God, he gets involved in your finances. He opens doors that were closed. He gives you favor where you didn't have it before. And he costs men to do things for you that they would not have done for you otherwise without the touch of God. We love all of you guys. We appreciate all of you. And we thank you for being a part of this ministry. This is all of our ministry. We can't do this without you. This is all of our ministry together. We all are working together for one goal. To hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Listen, you know somebody, you know at least one person that needs this message of encouragement today. Send it through WhatsApp. Send it through Facebook Messenger. Send it to your YouTube friends, to your Instagram friends, to your Pinterest friends, to your Snapchat friends. Just send it all over the place and help us get this message out there. We love all of you and we really appreciate you. That's for me and my lovely, beautiful wife, Pastor Amy. We love all of you. Looking forward to being with you again tomorrow morning on another morning prayer broadcast as we dig deeper into the Beatitudes. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.